when you are dealing with a particular incident or a case, you need to follow a sequence of actions, a workflow. Most of the things in that workflow will be automatic. Some of them may be manual. Some of them may require to reach out to other systems to gather more information, to ticket, it, ticket systems to perform some actions. And all those are put in a structure called the playbook. But creating a playbook needs to strike a balance between how easy and quickly can be created, simple playbook, while allowing the creator to be able to do some deep down programmatic things to do, execute, perform actions that were not foreseen in the standard, you know, things that uh, the, the, the tool creator did. Let's see how in CP4S, Playbook Designer tries to strike that balance between ease of use and flexibility. So if we go here into the menu under case management, let's actually go into playbooks. In this demo system, we have some playbooks already created and we're going to go back to them, but let's actually see what the process is to create a new one. So we're going to click here on create playbook. So we'll give it a name and click create. The first things you need to do, it, actually the tool does it for you automatically, is put the first part of that event, of that playbook. Uh, and that needs, it needs to specify, okay, how, what invokes the running of this playbook. And you have in the in those activation details you have here that it can be because an incident comes Let's say that uh, Splunk curator any SIM brings an incident to the attention of CP4S or it can be you know uh, triggered by a task within another component of CP4S it might be the creation of a node milestone artif the, the fact that an artifact shows up uh, so it can be you know based on an attachment so it has a multitude of things that can trigger this uh, playbook uh, to be uh, initiated. So let's say that the first one is the creation, the, the, the arrival of an incident. Uh, and then here you go alone and create the conditions that will make that happen. And, and in the end you can specify well if the incident is created which is the you know the, the default but you have you know other fields that you can actually select if the incident contains you know is created by you know wh whatever are the details and you can add conditions to it and these conditions can be by default all of them when, when all of them are met which is an and or when you click here they become or and you can you know and that. So those are the things that will trigger the execution of this playbook. So let's say that we want this incident to be that uh, an, a phishing, an, an incident that has any phishing information uh, is received, right? Because we want to deal with that particular thing. So, so that is. Uh, when the incident is uh, is created and notice that in here you have the different options that you can actually select from it and we're going to say that the incident type and we go from the pull down again no programming this is actually very easy contains you know the word phishing right Scroll down here and we see fishing right there and then we click done, right? And by the way, every time you create an element that has a red dot means that there is something that still needs to be done with it. If we click in here, we see they say, well, you don't have an endpoint, you don't have a mission connection, more on that later because uh, we just started with this. And then you're going to be adding components in here. The components that you will ask will be most likely task. And in here you can see the task classified by, you know, the, the this is the one that we did initial and then you have engage, 
you know, the initial triage, uh, you know, whatever are, are the actions. And all you need to do is drag that component in there, and then you connect them like any graphic tool with this, and you can move them and make it, you know, look pretty and all that, as, as you would expect. Right? So you have multitude of tasks already created. Uh, so, for example, if you want to, you know, perform particular actions, you, you can read on the list. It's actually very, it's very well populated with act the tasks that need to be performed. But you will also have uh, some components that are called functions. And what functions are, are typically uh, are uh, API calls, let me say it that way, to interact with other systems. Like, you know, go and talk to Curator, go to talk to Splunk, go to talk to Exchange, AWS, uh, ServiceNow, so perform some actions on ServiceNow, and some ticket and some stuff. And again, the, the way you actually do those is you, you just drag them and then uh, connect it with one another. More on that, uh, let me actually do this one in here. There are other components in here which are, we go, well, let's actually talk about the script. And this is the, the terms of flexibility. If there are some actions that you want to do and they are programmatically low level that you need to do them in Python, and, and you're proficient enough in Python to do so, then you, you have that flexibility right there. And you can add those scripts. And you'll see that everything that the tool does, that it uses Python underneath, uh, allows you to show you what what is it, what are the, those actions are and allows you to edit those scripts and modify them should you need to. But another key point in here are these, uh, the decision point. So a waypoint is actually... Let me drag one of those. Is is kind of a way I need to make sure that all these actions get actually performed. So I'm going to actually eliminate this component, and let's say that you, from the initial ax, uh, action, you want to trigger those two, and only when those two are completed is that you want this uh, waypoint to continue. Right. So that that's the way you will actually. Mm -hmm perform that. An endpoint is the termination of a branch. It can be the, your entire uh, playbook or it can be, you know, part of a section of a playbook that goes there. Now, w when you save this playbook, uh, and this is actually a test, you'll see that it's going to be in a draft mode. If, if it doesn't have any of those uh, uh, red dots, meaning that there are things that are, that are needed, then you can actually go ahead and actually uh, save it. And actually, w when I save it, this is actually pointing out that, well, in order to call service now, there are some fields that you actually need to put in there, right? That's what we're going to be, the kind of the input parameters to be sent to service now. You need to uh, deal with that. So, but then, th then if if, if I were to resolve this and the playbook is in uh, is save, it's going to be in draft mode and you need to publish it in order to make it available for the tool to be used. Now, another point that is important in here that is not available for the current version that I'm testing this with is these condition points. And these are, you know, if then else. You know, go this this side of the branch, else go the, uh, all this other side, which are... Uh, you know, very important part of a of a playbook but again on this particular version that i'm using is not probably by the time you watch this uh, it will be made available so this video is already getting about the 10 minute mark that i like to stay in so forgive me for that let's actually take a look at one that has already been created in here so i'm going i went back to the playbooks and i'm going to click on this one that is actually one that we follow for uh, for uh, another video that I'm doing on CP4S, we, we see the actions being taking place, the, the the waypoint, and these are the, this is the way that we deal with the phishing component. Uh, more on the on the in, uh, threat investigator graph, which is a an interesting uh, preview technology that CP4S uh, has, uh, so you can actually understand how the the attack is actually going. You go ahead and then disconnect the machines that were involved in this phishing attack and, and this analyzes the you know what what 
who is actually what's the subject of the email header and who else was actually been this email sent to you wait until those things are completed you go into this waypoint and then uh, you know you deal with uh, service now and and this is another option for checking whether data has been exfiltrated from the database and then the workflow continues but I, again uh, I think that at this point particularly when the decision point will include the if then else then you have a tool that strikes that good balance between ease of use as you can see and flexibility to even go into a particular action and modify even the way that even the if you need to do something in Python you will do it and even edit the actions that are being done by one of these particular uh, tasks and, and even modify it.